Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's video, I wanted to share what I eat in a day and what my exercise routine looks like. And we're also going to do a little bit of a vloggy style video. We're going to do a little bit of cooking. And so it should be a pretty fun video. So if you enjoy a lifestyle diet and exercise for postmenopausal women, then go ahead and give the video a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will put timestamps along the bottom so that if you're here just to see the recipes and cook with me, then you can jump ahead to that. If you're here just for the workout part, you can jump ahead to that. If you want to see what I eat for lunch, you can jump ahead to that. So I've been making these what I eat in a day videos for about seven or eight years now. And I got to say that as the time goes by and I get older, I've cleaned up my diet a little bit more and more every year. This year, in the past couple of years, I've been really concentrating on removing a lot of the extra sugars from my diet, removing a lot of the extra processed foods and empty carbs from my diet, and increasing my protein intake and increasing my fiber intake. And those are all things that are really important for menopausal and postmenopausal women because as our bodies age, we use protein protein less efficiently and so we need more protein to maintain our lean muscle mass and also to give us more energy to power our day. The standard guidelines for protein are for the average American woman to get like around 45 grams of protein, but that is a little bit on the low side. I'm trying to get about 90 grams of protein in my diet today, which is double what the recommendation is, but even so that's less than some might recommend. Some recommend one gram of protein for every pound of weight, in which case I would be supposed to be getting about 125 grams of protein. So if I get 30 at each meal pretty consistently, some meals I'll have more, like dinner I'll usually have a little bit more. I can approach that, but my minimum that I'm going for is around 90. I was also looking to increase the fiber in my diet because fiber helps you to stay fuller longer and it can help to decrease inflammation in your body. And the main thing that I was trying to do over the last few years was to cut down the excess sugars and processed foods and empty carbs in my diet. And I was doing that because they cause a lot of inflammation in the body and inflammation leads to all kinds of diseases of old age. I'm particularly concerned about heart disease because I do have a family history of heart disease. My dad had his first heart attack in his 60s. I didn't want to have my first heart attack in my 60s. I have hereditary high cholesterol from him and so I have never gone on the statins. I got my first high cholesterol reading back when I was in my 20s. And so within the first few months of changing my diet, I lowered my cholesterol by 30 points. And so that kept me in a normal range and I have managed to stay there for my entire adult life by doing my workout routine specifically for my heart and also stripping things out of my diet that are traditionally not considered heart healthy foods. I look at my diet and exercise routine for heart health, for longevity, for skin health, and also to be anti-inflammatory. So those are the kind of things that I put into my diet and exercise routine. I do a lot of research on it, but I am not a expert by any means. I am just a regular person like you trying to do the best I can for myself. So definitely take what I'm saying for what it's worth. This is what works for me. I'm not saying it will work for everybody, but I get so many requests from my viewers to do these kind of videos that I definitely want to do them because if they're helpful, then that's great. But of course you have to consider your own body type, your own physiology, what your health concerns are, what your hereditary issues are. You know, I know that a ton of people will write in and tell me that they're doing intermittent fasting or that they're doing the paleo or carnivore diet and that has helped them. Those aren't things that I do and those aren't things that I think would be right for me, but if they work for you, then I have no problem with it. More power to you. You know, all of our bodies are different and I learn more every single year. Like this year, as I said in my last video, um, there are so many more doctors on social media that are helping us to know more about menopause and how it affects our bodies and how it affects our physiology. And so I'm following new doctors. I'm following Dr. Vonda Wright and Dr. Stacy Sims and Dr. Mary Claire Haver. And if you didn't watch that one, I can link it right up here for you. Anyway, that is where I'm coming from. So let's go back in time to this morning and I'll show you what I eat for breakfast. Then we'll go down to my workout room in the basement and I'll explain about my workout routine. Hey you guys, it's time for breakfast. I've already taken the dogs out, but now I'm hungry and I'm gonna work out in a little bit. So I wanna get some fuel in my body so that I can fuel my workout. And uh, before you guys freak out at my breakfast, I do eat cereal for breakfast, but 
Like with all foods, all cereals are not the same. You definitely have to do a lot of digging and a lot of looking to find a cereal if you want to eat one that is a low glycemic index cereal, and I have found one. This cereal has only five grams of sugar per serving. I add in some peanut butter granola to increase the protein in my breakfast, but I cut the sugars in it down by adding some raw pumpkin seeds, some raw almonds, and some raw sunflower seeds. Then I Put it all into this nice container. So this is my breakfast. I have about a one cup serving of cereal. I eat my cereal with oat milk. I know you guys had encouraged me last time to switch from oat milk to soy milk or back to skim cow milk because it has more protein. I only needed about five extra grams of protein in my breakfast because my breakfast already contained about 25 grams of protein. I wanted to get it up to 30. I did try the soy milk and it really disagreed with my digestive system. So all I did was add an extra scoop of my collagen supplement powder. That has 11 grams of protein per serving and I was only using half a serving. So in order to get an extra five and a half grams, I just do the whole serving. So my breakfast has 30 grams of protein, it has five grams of sugar, and it has eight grams of fiber. The orange juice has 23 grams of sugars per cup. I drink about a quarter cup, so that that's cutting that down to about five grams of sugar, but it's not added sugar, it's natural sugar, so I don't count that. I do put a sugar cube into my tea. That is four grams of sugar, so my total breakfast is nine grams of sugar. And the reason I do a sugar cube in my tea is because it gives me a pre-measured four grams of sugar. I am not going for a zero sugar diet and I get very little sugar throughout the rest of my day. So for me, it's a really good breakfast. It stays with me all day. It's convenient. I don't have to cook anything and dirty up pots and pans. So I don't want you to check out just over my breakfast because of course you can do whatever you want. You don't have to eat this. You can eat you know, plain oatmeal is a great one. Yogurt with berries is a great one. Yogurt with berries with a non-super sugary granola is a great one. So there's so many different options, but in this video, people ask what I eat, and so that's what I'm sharing with you. And I don't wanna pretend that this isn't what I eat. Although one of the recipes we are gonna do today is like an overnight yogurt thing with fruit, and I think it looks really good. So um, maybe I will switch, but for now, this is what I'm eating. <laughs> All right, so now we've had our breakfast. Let's go downstairs to the workout room and I'll show you my workout. Dr. Vonda Wright says that doing impact really helps to increase your bone density. So I'm doing 20 jumps every time before I do my workout as a little warm up. Now, if you already have bone loss, you should definitely consult your doctor before adding in any impact. I do have a little bone loss. I had a DEXA scan a few years ago. I don't think it's enough to preclude me from doing the jumps, so I'm gonna go ahead and do them. Some days, I don't feel like doing 20 jumps. On those days, I'll do 10 jumping jacks and 40 marches. Then I get on my Peloton bike, and I usually just ride for a few minutes to warm up and to select the workout that I'm gonna do that day. I usually pick a 30 minute low impact ride and make sure that I have my Apple Watch synced with my Peloton so that I can keep track of my heart rate. What I learned from Dr. Mary Claire Haver this year is that working out in zone two helps to reduce inflammation in your body. So I wanna keep an eye on my heart rate throughout the entire workout. Zone two is 60 to 70% of your maximum output. So I don't follow the ride that the instructor is doing exactly. In order to stay in zone two, I have to keep adjusting either my pedal speed or my resistance so that I can stay in that 60 to 70% range. This is one of my favorite instructors, Jess King. She's so funny. She's so encouraging. I just love riding with her. Something that I learned from Dr. Stacy Sims is that for my heart health, I really also need to add in some full on sprints. And so I wait until the very end of my workout till I have about six minutes left. And then I do three 20 second sprints with two minutes of recovery in between each sprint. I'm not going to do the full workout right now because I do have to go upstairs and record the rest of the video, but let me just show you my little sprints and how I time them. I just watch the time on the screen and I start sprinting. I sprint for 20 seconds, pedal as fast as I can for 20 seconds, and then I take a two minute rest. And you can see how my heart rate spikes up into my zone three or even zone four. Um, and that's really good for my heart health. 
Then when I'm finished with the class, I do usually a five minute stretching routine before doing my weight workout. Doing my workout with weights after I bike keeps my heart rate in zone two while I'm lifting the weights. So I usually will do a half hour bike ride followed by a half hour of weights and that gives me an hour of zone two exercise. Here's the weightlifting side of my little workout room. I have two five pound weights, one seven pound, two eight pounds, two 10 pounds, two 12 pounds, and two 15 pounds. Now, what I've learned recently from the doctors that I follow is that it's really important to lift heavier once you're menopausal or postmenopausal. So my heaviest weights used to be the 10 pounders. I just got the 12 pounds and the 15 pounds because I'm trying to increase my weight. A lot of people asked me in my last video how to increase the weight and what constitutes lifting heavy. And of course, there's no one answer for that. Everyone's lifting heavy will be different depending on how strong you are and how much muscle mass you have. So in order to figure out what weight I'm going to use, I'll bring out three sets of weights and I'll start with the set that I would normally be able to lift three sets of 10. Then I'm going to go ahead and go to the next heaviest, which is the 12 pound weights. And now I'm going to do a set of 10 with those. And I can feel the difference just by adding the extra two pounds to each arm. Then I'm going to grab the 15 pound dumbbells and I'm going to try doing the 10 bicep curls with those. And if I have trouble doing the 10 bicep curls with those, then I know that that's my maximum weight. So the next time I work out, if I have to do three sets of 10, I'll try to do them with the 12s until the 12s become easy. And then I'll try to go up to the 15s. In order to increase your weight safely, you need to maintain proper form. Anytime that your form suffers, you should drop back to the next smaller weight. So I just go ahead and do the workout along with the Peloton instructor because I have lots of different strength workouts. In addition to the Peloton strength workouts, I've also been doing Tracy Steen's workouts on YouTube. I do 20 to 30 minutes of weightlifting every time I work out. I work out every other day or three to four days a week, depending on what I can fit into my schedule. And I know this session is done when my trainer comes over and tells me it's snuggle time. All right, so that's my breakfast and my workout. Then I usually shower and then I'm ready for my lunch. And if you guys have been watching me, you know that I eat the same thing for lunch every day, just like breakfast. I'm a creature of habit. I don't wanna to have to think about those two meals. I want them to be easy, convenient. The one thing that I will, will say about my lunch is that because it is a salad, a big salad, it takes a long time to eat it. But I kind of like that because it gives me a chance to just sit and like look at emails or watch a couple of videos. And so it's more like my little me time. And I've showed it to you before. What it basically consists of is lettuce as the base. It's usually about two cups of lettuce. And I like romaine. And then I usually add in some kale or some spinach because those are those dark leafy greens that are so good for your heart, so good for your body. They've got all kinds of great nutrients in them. And then I'll put on whatever vegetables I have handy. I'll put on tomatoes if I have them. I always have avocado on hand. Sometimes I have green peas in the fridge, so I'll put those on. Celery, carrots, just whatever you like in a salad you can put on it. Then I sprinkle a handful of nuts and seeds over the top. These are raw nuts and seeds. I never get the roasted or salted nuts and seeds. These are two things that I have on hand a lot and I put on my salad a lot. These are Melissa's peeled and steamed baby beets and these are Melissa's steamed lentils. They are both delicious. They're both great in a salad. It adds extra legumes, which adds extra fiber and extra protein to my salad. And the beets just add another type of vegetable and another type of fiber. So I love those. This is a homemade lemon tahini dressing that I make with apple cider vinegar. I do put in a little splash of balsamic and this is delicious. I just use an old salad dressing bottle and I make it in here. The recipe for this is on my blog. The recipe for my salmon salad is on my blog. Then I always put on a scoop of my salmon salad. I buy canned salmon. I only buy wild caught salmon. I never use farm salmon. I get it at Trader Joe's. It's really good. I mix it up with yogurt and curry, cumin, turmeric, some seaweed, some sesame seeds, a little bit of pepper, 
And then I also put in apple cider vinegar. What else goes in here? That's about it. Then I mix it up and a can of salmon tends to last me about three meals. On the side with my salad, I have a slice of bread. It's Ezekiel bread. I love this sesame bread. This has no sugars and it's got all the ancient grains in it. This is made with wheat, barley, beans, lentils, millet, and spelt. And I love the flavor of it toasted. Then I put some hummus on top to give me a little bit of extra protein in my lunch. And that's my lunch and I have a glass of water with it. Actually, I've got my water from my workout going back there in my corksicle container. So my lunch has 38 grams of protein, it has zero grams of sugar, and it has 17.2 grams of fiber. So that is giving me a pretty good, well-balanced lunch. After lunch, I'm pretty much go, go, go until the dog's dinner time. I come down then and I have a cup of green tea and I put a little bit of honey in it so it's not bitter. So I have my green tea, I'll put some oat milk in it. I also have either an apple with peanut butter on it. I buy the organic, sugar-free, salt-free peanut butter. It is delicious. And then I get apple, which has roughage in it. Or I'll have a bowl of yogurt with fresh blueberries, fresh raspberries, fresh strawberries. Then it's just water until dinner time. And then dinner is where I get the variety in my food. So I'll cook various things for dinner. I'll generally have salmon once a week and I've done a bunch of salmon recipes for you. They're over on my blog. Anything that you would make with ground beef, I make with ground turkey, and so I'll make chili or I'll make a pasta sauce. This is a dinner I made the other night. I'm gonna have this for leftovers for, for a few days because this made a lot. This is a ground turkey, mushroom, kale. I love it over brown rice. Let's see, I took pictures of the, some things that I had to eat this week. This is a chicken soup that I made over the weekend. It's really easy to make this from scratch and it's really healthy and really delicious. I usually have one tofu-based meal every week. This meal was a dinner, it has a peanut, tofu crumble that was really good, really crunchy and delicious. Also roasted cauliflower. There's brown rice with edamame and celery. I fried an egg and put that over the top and oh my gosh, that was so delicious, you guys. That was such a good one. For this video, I think we're gonna make another tofu recipe. I saw this version of a Parmesan that is vegan. This version has tofu for what would be like the chicken cutlet or the eggplant. For the coating, instead of doing an egg and then breading coating, it has quinoa coating. And you know, quinoa is so good for you. It's got a lot of extra protein and a lot of extra fiber. When you bake this, it gets really crunchy and it gives you that nice crunch. Then it's got some tomato sauce on top, which I'm gonna make my own little tomato sauce. And then it has, instead of melted cheese, it has a cheesy sauce made out of cashews and nutritional yeast. And I think it just looks delicious, so I wanted to give this one a try. Hopefully it'll be good. And then the second thing I wanna make are blueberry cheesecake overnight oats. It is time to make quinoa crusted tofu parmesan. This is a recipe that I got off of Instagram, and I saw it on plant-based recipes, but I think they're regramming it. It's actually from That Vegan Babe, and she says that it is an adaptation of a recipe from At Plant You. So. Anyway, I'm doing my own take on it today. I'm sticking pretty much to the recipe, but I thought that it would be fun to try to flavor the tofu a little bit by boiling it with some vegetable stock base. So this is just junk that every time I cut up vegetables, celery, onions, things like that, I just take whatever's left over and I throw it in a zipper bag and I throw it in my freezer. This is a little trick that my daughter taught me and it makes a great base for making like a vegetable stock. So I just take this whole bag and I just dump it right into a pot of boiling water. Add a few grinds of salt, give it a little pepper. After that boils for about 15 minutes, I'm gonna be ready to strain it and then I'm gonna put my tofu in it. Now the reason I'm gonna put my tofu in it is you know how you have to press your tofu to get all the extra water out? Well, I was just seeing on Instagram that you can like boil it quickly and that pulls the water out more evenly, but if you boil it for like five or 10 minutes, it also infuses the flavors of the stock into the tofu. So I was like, oh my gosh, win-win. So I wanted to give that a try today. In the meantime, I've got to set up three bowls for dredging my tofu when it's ready. And into the three bowls it goes flour, salt, pepper, Italian spices, and a plant-based milk. And then the third bowl is for our quinoa. 
The recipe calls for whole wheat flour. I've got chickpea flour and almond flour, so I'm gonna go ahead and use these. I think I'll use about a 50-50 of these. I'm hoping that the almond and chickpea flour will help it to be a little bit more crispy and crunchy and also will give it a little bit more protein. So I'm cutting this recipe in half, actually. This recipe calls for two blocks of tofu. So I'm gonna be just using one, so it calls for a cup of flour. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a quarter cup of each of these. Quarter cup of chickpea flour and a quarter cup of almond flour. This is starting to boil. I'm just gonna turn that down to a simmer. And then the other reason that I'm making this nice vegetable stock is that I am gonna be making my own tomato sauce, so I'll be able to use some of that in my tomato sauce to give it a little extra flavor as well. I'll put in some salt and then some fresh pepper. I like a lot of pepper, so I'm gonna make it nice and peppery. Put in some garlic powder, onion, and rosemary. This sounds really good. I can't wait to eat this. I think it's gonna be delicious. So I'm just gonna stir these up. And then in this bowl, we put some plant-based milk. I use the Planet Oat Unsweetened Original. And then the third bowl is for our quinoa. This is the brand of quinoa that I use. All right, the boiling of the vegetables is done. I'm just gonna remove all the veggies from the water and put in the tofu. I've already drained most of the liquid off the tofu, so I'll just add it to the boiling water and I'll let it boil for just a couple of minutes and then we'll be ready to coat it and pop it in the oven. So it's been over there like at a low simmer for about three to five minutes, so I'm gonna remove it and put it on the paper towels. I've got my prepared baking sheet. I just lined it with foil so it would be less cleanup. Um, she did suggest cooking them on a greased rack so that you don't have to turn them. Otherwise, you do have to turn them and they might not get as crispy. And I'm just gonna cut up my tofu and cut it in half this way. This is definitely gonna work best with extra firm tofu. I'm just stacking them up here with paper towels because they're still very moist on the inside. So the first thing you do is put it in the flour mixture and make sure it gets on all sides, including the ends. Then it goes into the plant milk. And then it goes into the quinoa. And then onto the baking dish. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. All right, let's keep going. And they are all ready to go in the oven. They're gonna go in at 425 for 30 to 40 minutes. In the meantime, we'll make the sauce and the cheesy cashew sauce. All right guys, funny story. I went to the cabinet to get out my can of tomatoes and I didn't have one. It was the one thing that I was sure I had. And so when I went to the store to get the ingredients, I didn't buy it. So I just had to run out to the store and get it. So anyway, here it is. So let's start making the tomato sauce. Medium heat to start. I'm gonna just pour in a few healthy glugs of olive oil. And of course, tomato sauce always needs fresh garlic, so I have the garlic. If you don't have fresh and you have a hard time keeping it on hand, I also like this frozen garlic that I get at Trader Joe's. This stuff is awesome. It comes in a little frozen grid, almost like an ice cube tray, and you just pop them out, and they're really easy and convenient to use. But since I do have fresh, let me go ahead and pop out a few cloves of garlic here. Oh my goodness. The cord got caught on the drawer and the whole thing went flying off the counter. And it didn't even stop recording is the funny thing. My phone, <laughs> it's still recording that clip. Okay, it's turning into the witching hour where things are happening. I know, and I ran out to the store and of course left the oven on. And then when I got back, I could smell tofu in there cooking. <laughs> I was like, oh no. I hope I wasn't gone too long that they burned, but they're not. All right, so I just smashed the garlic with my knife. <laughs> And just give it a nice little chop. Oops, don't chop off my fingers. Just add that to the pan. And when I'm making red sauce, I usually put in pine nuts and capers, and I usually simmer these with the garlic so that they get nice and toasty and they add a nice toasty flavor to the sauce. I'm just gonna sprinkle in 
a bunch of pine nuts and they'll give it some crunch and some extra texture. I love adding caper berries to the sauce. They give it a really nice briny flavor. Keep that moving, turn that down. Chop up the caper berries, nice and small. You don't want too big of a caper berry in your mouth with the sauce. And of course you could do regular capers, then you wouldn't have to chop them because they would already be the right size. Pop those in. Then I'm just gonna take a ladle full of our vegetable stock. I'm gonna pop that over. Mm. Now I can turn that off and I'll save the rest of that and make some soup. I'm gonna let those simmer down and deglaze the pan. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and add my can of tomatoes, put in a little salt, a little pepper, I think we'll add a little rosemary so it kind of matches the flavors on the tofu and I like it a little spicy so I'm going to add some red pepper flakes. Of course if you have fresh herbs that's always great to add. All right I've got everything set up to make the cheesy sauce but in the meantime the tofu was ready to come out of the oven and it looks so good you guys I can't wait to show it to you. Don't they look delicious? They look crispy and crunchy. Can't wait. So, all right so let's quickly do the cheesy sauce. Well, you just take all the ingredients that it needs, you pop them in a food processor, you give it a whiz, and it's ready. So I'm cutting the recipe in half, so it's actually a half a cup of cashews, a quarter cup of water, a juice of a quarter of a lemon, half a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, an eighth of a cup of nutritional yeast. That's gonna go in, that's what's gonna make it taste nice and cheesy. One small clove of garlic and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Hmm, it's good. Mmm, mmm, delicious. The cashews are a little sweet. Let me put a little more salt and pepper in and then I think we'll be good to go. All right, you guys, it's all ready. I am so excited to try this. Let's plate it up. Put a little red sauce on it, a little bit of our cheesy nut sauce. Get a little height and verticality going in our presentation. I love all the chunkers in the sauce, the uh, caper berries and the pine nuts. And here it is, finished product, the quinoa tofu parmesan. Woo, so psyched about this. It is beautiful. I mean, I could see making this as an appetizer or as a main dish. You just serve it with a side salad. Hope it's as good as it looks. Oh my gosh. Crispy on the outside, soft and moist on the inside. An explosion of flavors because of the two sauces and the herbs in the in the crust. Mmm, my gosh. This is so good. I'm just gonna have a pile of this for dinner tonight with a nice green salad and that'll be my dinner. Loaded with protein because of the quinoa and the tofu. Mm. Okay, good one. All right, let me stop stuffing my face and let's do the overnight oats recipe really quick. And they're really easy to make. You just mix everything up in a bowl, top it with the mashed up blueberries, stick it in the fridge overnight, and bam, in the morning, you've got a good nutritious breakfast. So this calls for 100 grams of oats. And I'm doubling this recipe because I had a bigger container, so I'm hoping it's gonna be good, so I'm making two. Two tablespoons of peanut butter. The recipe called for cashew butter. And it also wanted two tablespoons of maple syrup. I used one tablespoon of maple syrup because I don't want it to be too sweet. So I'll we'll throw those in. Two tablespoons of flaxseed, 100 grams of yogurt, 160 ml of your plant-based milk, in my case, oat milk. I'm just gonna pour this over, and then we just mix this all together. Um, I feel like the hard thing to mix in is the peanut butter. My peanut butter is the Teddy peanut butter with the flax seeds in it already. That's my dog peanut butter. It's the one I feed my dogs for their treats, and so they're both sitting right here waiting for their spoonful of peanut butter. The recipe called for frozen blueberries, but I'm gonna use fresh. So I don't have a masher, so I'm just gonna use a fork and mash up the blueberries a little bit. And these also wanted a chocolate sauce on top, and where I'm trying to cut out the sugars, I'm not gonna put a chocolate sauce on top. I'm gonna add a little bit of fresh lemon juice. 
And last thing, I'm just gonna sprinkle some almonds over the top, our overnight oats. We'll see how that is in the morning. It's ready for peanut butter. A nice scoop for you. There you go. Different spoon. <laughs> and a little baby scoop for you. Come with the spoon. Good morning, you guys. Wanted to give you a report on the overnight oats. This is really yummy. It is delicious. It's peanut buttery and blueberry-y and the oats are nice and soft. I like having the nuts on top though for the added crunch. Mm. Yeah, it's tasty. I would make this again. I figured out the protein and fiber on it. It has 33 grams of protein and 15.4 grams of fiber where I'm gonna eat half, that cuts that in half down to 16.5 grams of protein and 7.7 .7 grams of fiber, which is lower than my normal breakfast. Once we add in the 11 grams of protein from my tea, from the collagen supplement, that brings it up to 27.5 grams of protein. So that's approaching the 30 that I usually get in my breakfast, but the fiber is still only at three and a half, four grams, whereas my normal breakfast is eight grams of fiber. So I like my normal breakfast better, but overall, I think this is really good if you're looking for something quick and easy for breakfast. On the other dish that we made last night, the tofu uh, quinoa parmesan bake. So for the entire batch, 58 and a half grams of protein, pretty good and 10 and a half grams of fiber. So I ate half of it as my dinner over a salad. And so that had 29.25 grams of protein and 5.25 grams of fiber. So not bad for a standalone dinner. You could also eat it as a high protein snack during the day or put it out as an appetizer if you're having people over. I thought it was really tasty, really delicious, a good twist on an Italian classic. So I hope you enjoyed the recipes and spending the day with me. <laughs> it's the next day. So um, yeah, so have a great day, everybody.